All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is kind of early. Uh, I decided to break out some different coffee. Typically, I use the Lavazza coffee, but today I have gotten on, uh, gotten an order in for Wallacea coffee. It's the Wild Luwak coffee. Um, I don't know if any of you guys know of it. I'm sure that if you're watching this video, you've done some research on this type of coffee. But just to give you an idea of the types of coffee that I like to drink. I do have a couple of coffees that I do drink on the regular. Uh, my everyday coffee is going to be the Lavazza Super Crema. Uh, we drink this pretty much as the industry standard. This is what we drink every day in the house. I did get my hands on some of this stuff, Death Wish Coffee. Um, I have not tried this yet. I'll post up a review once I do. Um, nice box. Looks to be pretty decent from for what it is. It's whole bean, so we'll grind that fresh as well, and we'll go from there. So this is the other one that I love, the Cafe Du Monde. You can't go wrong with this. Uh, it's coffee and chicory. Absolutely delicious. It's strong. Make grow some chest hairs, so be careful. But for the most part, we're looking at the Lavazza coffee that I typically use. These are the beans. Um, I took them out of my grinder because, um, you know, I wanted to br grind this coffee fresh. So, without further ado, this is the coffee. I bought this off of Amazon. It was reviewed pretty highly. There's a million different brands out there. Um, you know, you don't know what you're, you're getting typically. But um, for what I can smell, it smells pretty delicious. So... We'll just open her up. Let's take a quick look and see what these beans look like. And they look like pretty high quality beans. They don't look terrible, you know? They're all whole piece beans. They are not chunks of beans or anything like that. They are definitely good quality beans. So let me grind up a few of these. We'll get it going in the French press. We'll uh, we'll do an initial review. I'll be right back. So I want to measure out, um, we were looking at about seven grams per eight ounce cup of coffee. So we're gonna shoot for um, 28 grams of coffee. I'll do that right here. That's 29, that really seems very light. I'm gonna go a little heavy handed. We'll do, we'll do, let's say eight, let's do 40, let's do 50 grams. If we have 50 grams. Close enough. 49 grams of coffee we got going in there. All right, so to that, we're gonna add about, we'll do a quick pour over. We just wanna see what we're getting from this. We'll take a look at this action right here. Let's see if we have any off gassing coming off. And it doesn't really look like much. I don't really see much of the off gassing at all. If you guys can see that. It does have an interesting smell. Let's continue pouring. All right, so we're up to about 400 grams in total weight. We'll take this up to about, I'm gonna say close to 800. We'll do 850. This is obviously, 
you know, not super scientific. So we are at 855 grams total. So yeah, that's about right, because we put about 50 grams of uh, coffee and another 800 grams of water, which is 800 ml, give or take. Um, it's one gram per ml, so it's an industry standard for water. Uh, learned that from chemistry class. So we are at 855 total weight. Um, we're gonna let this brew couple minutes so realistically we're looking at about what do we say 50 grams with 800 so yeah I mean that should be a, a fairly strong cup of coffee you know so I really don't see any off gassing at all like if you look in here you really don't see any bubbles developing you know it's just sitting there kind of bring it in a little bit closer for you guys Doesn't smell particularly strong or aromatic either, you know, but, you know, this coffee, the description on the back, you know, it is made in Indonesia, produced by P.T. Jafarindo International Indonesia. Uh, you know, Wallacea coffee, wild kopi, lua coffee beans, gallo, Sumatra, Indonesia, 250 grams. Best date is December of 2020, so we're still well within that date. This is a dark roast. You know, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't really, it doesn't really look all that luxurious, the packaging. You know, it kind of looks okay. There is a one-way valve. There's a little sticker on here. But otherwise, I could not discern this package from any other package of coffee. You know, if you compare it to, say, something like Lavazza's, you know, don't really see much of a difference in terms of the packaging. Stir up this coffee. And wait till the beans or the coffee grinds sink to the bottom. And it's looking good. So there are coffees from all sorts of, uh, all different portions of the world. There's coffee from South America, coffee from, uh, you know, Asia. There's coffee from the Middle East. Uh, you know, you can pretty much get coffee on multiple continents of the world. And each coffee is going to taste slightly different. Some is going to be a little bit more fruity in profile. Some are going to be more earthy. Um, and, you know, you can really... You know, I, I'm not at that level where I could say I could discern where a coffee comes from, but I can definitely tell you when it's a good cup of coffee versus a bad cup of coffee. So we're going to give this one a shot. Let's see what this coffee tastes like. I'm going to press this coffee right now. Okay. We've got my sugar in the raw, my bulk package from Costco. Give me a like if you like Costco because everybody loves Costco. I'll throw one and a half sugars in there. And uh, let's give this a pour. Let's see what we have. Let's see if this is coffee that lives up to the hype. I'm going to try it without cream. And I'm going to try it with cream. So right off the bat, it's very, it's got a very flat taste, this coffee. I can't say that it tastes amazing. Um, I would have to tell you that this coffee 
is probably going to be one of those coffees that is an acquired taste. It does have a little bit of fruitiness to it. Let's give this another whirl. Mm. Okay, there we go. The cream definitely brought out a lot more flavor. Um, very floral, very fruity. Um, just a really, really nice taste to it. Very smooth. Not lingering, not acidic. Oh, that is very good coffee. Um, maybe I'm not a black coffee drinker. That's probably what it is. But I will tell you that this coffee... I don't know if it lives up to the hype. I think that the price tag is extremely expensive for what you pay for. This bag of coffee, um, I found it online. Uh, one of the lesser expensive ones. Um, because honestly, I don't really trust the more expensive ones online because you don't know what you're paying for. If I'm going to buy these coffee beans, I'm going to go to a coffee distributor or a wholesaler or someone that like I can, you know, I'm dealing with face to face. I'm in a store. I'm buying it from that one person. I know where the coffee is coming from. I know the, the supply chain. You know, for all I know, this coffee could have been sitting in a box for the last three years waiting to be purchased by me. You know, we don't know where this coffee comes from. We don't even know if this is actual Wild Luwak coffee. It just says so on the package. There is no traceability. There's nothing that tells me that, yes, this is 100% certain Wild Luwak coffee other than the packaging, you know. But for the taste, for the, um, for the, um, the aroma, doesn't really have much of, a, of, a, um, of an aroma. Like, you really can't smell this coffee. I don't have a cold. But the taste is almost very fruity. It's got a very floral, fruity taste to it. Um, very similar to this coffee, but better. Um, is it worth the price um, upgrade? Mm, I don't know. I'll let you guys figure that one out. But for now, thanks for watching. Enjoy a cup of coffee. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Be well.